Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I want to discuss a topic that's coming up more and more frequently and that is what connectors do I use when I'm not using DB9 connectors for motor cables? Um, I get this question typically from guys that are performing a retrofit uh, either on a full scale knee mill or even you know smaller grade mills where they're just not happy with DB9s. DB9 connectors I personally feel have their place in CNC. They're excellent for data communication. Um, the G540 utilizes female DB9s <clears throat> for its motor cables or for its motor cable inputs and of course the male DB9 for the actual plug into the female. Um, again, you're running 48 volts, 3.5 amps max for the G251 internal drives inside the G540, uh, you, typically 2.7 amps RMS. You're not seeing a lot of heat Overall, you're pretty good. I mean, those connectors really will hold up fine under that application. I would not push them any more than that. Again, 18 gauge wire with those uh, connectors is really, really pushing it. I mean, it's a tight squeeze even for me and I solder all the time. So again, if I'm doing a pro grade build, if I'm doing a build or a retrofit where, again, I wanna step it up or I'm dealing again with higher amperage, again, if I'm dealing commercial grade, uh, Gecko G203Vs, Gecko G201X, Gecko G214s, where you're going in excess of 70 volts. These are your connectors of choice, and or at least my choice. Um, that being said, a lot of you guys are probably out there going, I've seen those connectors before, I can get these individually. Yes, you can, um, but what I wanted to do is make it really simple. And when I say really simple, again, simple, stupid. Instead of you having to go out and buy each individual connector, I'm giving you the entire package to complete one axis. So again, what you see here is what would be actually required to retrofit one motor cable for a machine. And how it goes is we have our panel mount connector here, and again, it's a five pin. Um, for those of you guys who are not familiar with these connectors, you can see they do have a tab. I'm just pointing out if I can without actually blocking the light. There you go. You can see that metal tab there. They only allow the plugs, these are the female butt joints, to actually plug in one way. And again, you can see that right here. And again, you can also see that there's actually numbers on each of the pins for the female connectors. Now, these connectors all have that. The panel mount connector, again, very simple to mount. Drill a hole. Once you drill the hole, remove the nut, remove the washer, insert the connector into the hole, and again, just replace the nut and the washer. Very simple, it's mounted, you're good to go. Um, the one caveat with these connectors is the fact that there is a technique when you're working with them, you wanna solder them um, in, an easier, in the easiest format possible that will leave you accessibility to the bottom connector. Again, there's pin one, two, three, four, and five. I always start from the bottom because again, I can work my way up and again, it leaves me ample room to you know, deal with whatever type of motor cable I'm working with, whether it be 18.4 or 16 gauge. Um, typically guys, I go with 18 gauge. I've never had a problem with that when I'm dealing with motor cables. Again, even with up to 80 volts, you're usually pretty fine with that. You're not gonna, you're not gonna see any real problems there. Um, when you start going, you can go 16 gauge. A lot of the guys, you know, looking at these, and I hope you guys are really drawing the image that most of these type of connectors are used on our spindles. You know, and I'm talking commercial spindles. I'm not talking wooden routers. Um, again, the main difference with a spindle connector is that this piece that's actually uh, plastic on a spindle connector is ceramic, and it's usually ceramic for heat. Um, so again, it tells you the voltage that you can deal with with these connectors. They're well suited for up to three phase. And again, high amperage, you're not gonna have a problem. They are built like a tank. So again, we have our panel mount. Then we have our female butt joint. And again, you do have a locking nut, okay? And these nuts, these are threaded. You can see the panel mount has threads on it. When you engage the unit, again, it can only go in one way. It'll push in and then you'll just engage your nut and you're locked in. Now, once these are engaged, guys, I cannot tell you how strong these connectors are. I can definitely tell you that it will destroy the cable before the actual unit will fail. Uh, that being said, you know, do not use excessive force when tightening these. You're not, you know, naturally tightening the lug nuts on your Chevy. This is a part that's meant to be removed and relatively easy. You don't have to worry about vibration too much with these. Um, they're just a really, really elaborate design when it comes to the actual screw lock. It's, it's, they work just, just remarkably well on our designs. Overall, again, very, very simple to use. And again, you can see here we go from female butt to another female butt, and then we go to a male butt connector, okay? And again, the, the actual motor cable would go in between the two female butt connectors, 
and then the panel mount goes into your chassis so you can actually enter the chassis and then we have our mail buck connector which again you're not going to see this connector often this is a really different type of connector and again super easy to use you can see your screw lock that actually holds the uh, plastic terminals in or excuse me the plastic mount that holds your terminals inside there inside this unit there's also a uh, it looks like a, uh, more or less a plastic shield that will actually insulate all of your wires again this is a commercial grade connector and again it's it's formulated for actually aviation so the durability of these connectors is really tough to explain without you actually seeing it but rest assured that's why i've chosen they're just excellent in quality and super durable and again you do have the stress relief on this as well once you actually solder in your terminals to your motor cables <clears throat> Now, again, if you're dealing with a four lead stepper, which really this is what these packages are designed for is for, you know, bipolar steppers, you're going to find you're going to have one terminal you're not going to use, which is totally normal. OK, I have guys asking me, that, well, the fifth lead, what am I going to do with the fifth, the fifth prong? You just don't solder it. You're fine. Overall, we want to just worry about the drain wires on our motor cable itself that will go to the fifth pin on these female butt joints. Okay, and then inside here on your panel mount, that fifth pin will come to your ground. Okay, then you have guys that'll ask me, does it matter if I ground it on the panel, the, the actual chassis side, the electrical chassis, or the actual mechanical chassis, which would be your CNC frame? Um, it's up to you. Okay, I choose one, and you will only ground it on one end because we do not want a ground loop. So again, you only have to ground it one side. I always choose the actual chassis mount because again, putting a ground bar, most ground bars are actually in a CNC chassis or should be, and therefore the electrical chassis is what I'm discussing. That's where I choose to mount it. But overall, you can now see how simple this package is to use. Again, it's, it can be used on any you know, motor, realistically, NEMA 42, 34, um, 23, 24, NEMA 17, if you do decide to go that small. I mean, they're just an amazingly simple to use connector and on top of that um, what I really like is the mountability because realistically all you're doing is you know drilling a hole I mean for the panel mount version you're drilling a hole overall again just using the technique that I, I discussed as far as soldering if you're careful and you take your time you'll get the technique down and working with them is not that big a deal one thing I will say though is when that cable is done you will have a very very well made cable take your time um, again, you have very little room in here to actually put the end of the cable, so measure accordingly when you do decide to, uh, to cut the actual casing of the cable to do the soldering and get you your terminals. Other than that, it, like I said, it's a technique. You practice a little bit, move on to a, a regular full-scale piece, and you'll be set. It's really not that difficult. But again, these are, without a doubt, ju it's just the easiest package you can imagine. Again, depending upon how many axes you need, if you need you know, three of these kits, it'll handle three axes four kits for four axis and so on and so forth. Now, if you do need motor cable, I have 18.4 shielded. I can incorporate whatever size you need so we can, you know, tackle whatever situation you're going up against. Um, again, a lot of times guys are asking me, you know, what connectors I recommend for other applications. These do come in other sizes. I am getting some more sizes in as far as when I say sizes, it's just the actual pins. Um, overall, you, you know, you'll have two pin, three pin, so on and so forth. But for motor cables, these are the, the general ones that I always get asked about. And when doing a retrofit, sometimes it's the hardest thing to find, you know, all the connectors in one spot or just get a, uh, just an all-inclusive package. And that's why I designed this. This makes it so much easier. Again, you buy a set, you know exactly what you're doing, and you can watch the video if you needed to again and just use it as cross-reference. Okay, this goes in the chassis, one end of my cable here, one end of my cable here. And this goes to my motor and I'm ready to go. So again, guys, I hope this video has been informative. I hope it's helped you. Um, if you do have any questions, again, don't be afraid to ask. I, I, I'm hoping, you know, that you do ask questions more and more. I mean, it, it gives me ideas. On top of something else I want to discuss, and that is safety. You know, a lot of times I get more questions on CNC in general than anything to do with safety. And that's kind of surprising because I know safety is so important in everything we do with this. Um, I love CNC. I mean, I live it, breathe it. Um, and I know a lot of you guys do. And we kind of take it for granted, safety. And I really hope that anyone, you know, delving into CNC really takes the safety serious of what they're actually building you know uh 2.2 k spindle has a, a roughly three horsepower guys that's a lot of power that's like you know a briggs and stratton engine you know strapped to your chassis 
you know, God forbid a mistake is made, you know, screw the chassis, screw, you know, whatever you're working on. But I mean, you don't want to hurt yourself or your family. Think, you know, think about what you're doing. I get guys that, you know, they'll message me and say, you know, I don't know what's wrong with my system. And then they tell me they're using like, you know, 18 gauge wire to run their spindle. That's 220 at so many amps. Guys, I always say, build it better, build it better, overbuild it. You know, look at overall what you're doing just because a casing on the wire says that it's rated to a certain amount. If it's, you know, ridiculous in the amount, I mean, if you're using, you know, 20 gauge wire to run, you know, 220 at 10 amps, let's be very cautious in what we're doing, you know, and I, I say that because I see it all the time. And again, I know you guys are anxious to get the system built. I know that sometimes we take for granted, you know, what we're working with because a lot of this is DC volts and you feel, oh, it's not that critical or, you know, I can mount this on wood or do whatever. It's, you know, I'm just dealing with low volts. This is, you know, piddly crap. Nothing's going to happen. Please be careful because, again, fires happen. It doesn't take much to start a fire. You could start a fire with, you know, a couple, couple volts can start a fire. And, you know, like I said, take your safety serious. Take your shop serious. Don't put anything at risk, and, and whatever you do, whether you, I don't care who you buy from or what you do, just do it safe, you know, and I, I really can't emphasize that enough, but again, I hope this video has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, once again, my name is Vince. I'm over at eDealers Direct Automation on eBay. Again, the name is eDealers Direct. eBay doesn't allow f the full name to come out, actually, because of uh, actual um, space discrepancies, so... Again, my email is storm, S-T-O-R-M, 2313, gmail.com. Thank you. Take care.